taste of this Japanese slugger. And this pop duo have in common. Both love the same manga. Barefoot Gen is the story of a resilient boy from Hiroshima called Gen, who lost family members in the 1945 atomic bombing. More than 10 million copies of the manga have been released worldwide. The series has been published in 20 countries. It began 40 years ago and continues to attract fans. In July, the Persian version was released in Iran, a country with a controversial nuclear program. I enjoyed it immensely. I couldn't stop turning the pages until the end. The story of Gen also touched the heart of a U.S. veteran sent to Iraq in the fight against terrorism. Like I said, right before you, you, you go to war, people should know the consequences. Today we look at the global appeal of Barefoot Gen. Welcome to today's close-up. I'm Hiroko Kunia. Late manga artist Keiji Nakazawa, the author of Barefoot Gen, wrote that he barely survived the 1945 atomic bombing in Hiroshima when, at the age of six, he clung to a concrete wall 1.2 kilometers away from ground zero. Although he suffered burns, he managed to escape the fires and was reunited with his mother. But he lost his father and two siblings. Barefoot Gen is loosely based on Nakazawa's own experience. In the story, he depicts the gut-wrenching horrors of Hiroshima immediately after the bomb was dropped. Survivors faced poverty and discrimination and struggled to live in post-war Japan in dire circumstances. Nakazawa penned the work fueled with anger toward the war and the atomic bombing. He passed away late last year, aged 73, but continued to tell children about his experience until the very end. Meanwhile, as if responding to the author's aspirations, more and more people worldwide are reading Barefoot Gen. The story has been translated and published in 20 countries including those with nuclear weapons, such as the U.S. and Russia, as well as countries in Asia and Europe. In many cases, it has been translated voluntarily by Japanese and foreign nationals who were moved by its contents. Why is the work capturing the hearts of people across borders? First, we'll look at the unknown struggle Nakazawa faced to publish the series in weekly magazine form. Misayo is the wife of late manga artist Keiji Nakazawa. Nakazawa died late last year. For the first time, Misayo has revealed his passion for conveying the horrors of nuclear warfare. He said that through the power of manga, he had to let children know what he learned from the atomic bomb and what he felt. He said everything had to be conveyed through barefoot gen. In 1973, Nakazawa had a chance to release the manga as a series. The circulation of the magazine Weekly Shonen Jump was soaring thanks to a number of popular manga features. Nakazawa wanted to accurately depict the gruesome scenes of Hiroshima immediately after the bomb was dropped. Uh, 
A girl with broken glass stuck all over her body. Skin seared by intense heat. Gen's family perished in the fires trapped under a collapsed building. This tragedy is based on Nakazawa's own account of how he lost his father, sister and brother. He would say that only those who experienced the atomic bomb know what they went through. My husband seemed to feel that he had a duty to convey what he saw. He would tell me that he often felt someone was behind him, telling him to draw. But Barefoot Gen failed to win widespread popularity. Weekly Shonen Jump decides the order in which series are featured based on feedback from readers. Two months into the series, Barefoot Gen went from fourth place to almost last. Nakazawa had depicted Gen as being afraid of dying from radiation-related illnesses. and searching in vain for food for his mother and newborn baby sister. Gen was always lonely. Noritaka Yamaji was an editor in charge of Barefoot Gen. He visited Nakazawa frequently and told him readers were unhappy with the series. Readers asked me how long this depressing story was going to go on and that they were sick of it. Some readers naturally responded this way, but Nakazawa was anxious to stick to reality, to convey the truth, and I'm sure he was always torn between satisfying the needs of both sides. Nakazawa was anxious to convey the reality of the atomic bomb to children as they're entrusted to build the future. Misao watched him suffer as the series failed to win popularity. After Gen's family perished, the story lost its appeal. It was sad and hard to bear, and I told him that. It turned out that my husband was aware of this, and from then on, all he had in mind was trying to figure out how to make things more interesting to the readers. How could Gen attract more readers? After much trial and error, Nakazawa came up with a plan to bring a new character into the story. It was a boy, Ryuta, who looks exactly like Gen's younger brother, who perished in the fires. Ryuta had been orphaned and encountered Gen while stealing food. Gen comes to the rescue and befriends him. Gradually he finds himself able to laugh once more. Orphans, too, are full of strength and the will to live on. They do all they can to live. I told my husband that Ryuta makes the story really interesting and that I was anxious to read the next episode. This seemed to give him the incentive to keep working. Gen and his fellow survivors are also unfazed by rumors that nuclear-related illnesses can be transmitted. They defend themselves against discrimination from the owner of a house they board in. After finding a friend, Gen starts to overcome the odds and gets stronger. This storyline won back the hearts of readers. Gen can't just keep on lamenting the consequences or feel angry with his situation, because that's selfish. Instead, he takes care of others. I wanted Gen's tale to become a coming-of-age story where readers can empathize and feel that Gen's story is their own. 
In this way, they are sharing Gen's experience. The atomic bomb survivors are suffering, but they're living on. They try really hard to survive. My husband really wanted to tell them not to give in, to keep on going. That's the entire theme of Gen's story. We must continue to live no matter what happens. Nakazawa's wife, Misayo, told us that Nakazawa used to have nightmares as he illustrated how terrible it was in Hiroshima soon after the atomic bomb was dropped. The story ends when Gen graduates from junior high school and leaves for Tokyo to become a painter. Nakazawa had wanted to write a sequel on Gen's suffering and distress in Tokyo as an atomic bomb survivor but couldn't due to a cataract. Still, many people were moved by the powerful story and asked Nakazawa for permission to translate it so those outside Japan could appreciate it too. Nakazawa didn't ask for royalties and said he wanted children worldwide to read the story. Translators, most of them volunteers, put the story into 20 languages. People everywhere feel empathy toward the message in Barefoot Gen, not just the tragedy of the atomic bomb, but other problems the world faces today. Iran has a controversial nuclear program. In July, the Persian version of Barefoot Gen was published there. Iranians are becoming captivated by the depiction of the devastation following the atomic bombing. I enjoyed it immensely. I couldn't stop turning the pages until the end. I didn't realize the devastating effects of a nuclear bomb. Sara Abedini is an Iranian who came to Hiroshima to study. She translated the story. Abedini argues that Iran should never develop nuclear weapons. She volunteered to translate the story, hoping Iranians back home would read it. People's skin peeled off and their hair fell out because of the bomb. I knew nothing about such effects until I read Barefoot Gen. I thought it was worth translating into Persian if the book could convey the sadness of the survivors to my compatriots. A group read Barefoot Gen together at a bookstore. They exchanged candid opinions about how Iran should face nuclear issues. I couldn't help but think what I would have done if I were Gen. I was heartbroken when I read about him watching his family members die in the fire. It must have been so hard. It would be good if nuclear weapons were eliminated from the world, but that's not realistic. We can never stop war. There are all sorts of conflicts in the Middle East in particular. I wonder if we, as citizens, can abolish nuclear arms from this world. If there is a way to root out nuclear weapons, then we need to gain more knowledge. We should also educate other people about the horrors of nuclear war and radiation. 
Barefoot Gen is also resonating with people in the United States, which dropped the bomb. The story is being read in over 2,000 educational institutions, from elementary schools to universities. The comic books could be more powerful, more serious uh, than we may have thought. Uh, because it, it, it stirs up strong feelings, but is, what, what more, what is the value of that? Like Professor Leonard Reifas uses Barefoot Gen in his class. He says students are interested in what happened in Hiroshima, which to them had been just another event in history. I heard of the atomic bomb going off uh, back in history class a while ago, but um, just reading it, you know, like everyone else was saying it, was, you know, from someone who was actually um, living the situation, I did feel like I was a lot more connected. And um, I think these images are quite graphic, but I think they're also very important as an American to see something like this. Carlos Grande compares Gen's experiences with his own in a recent war. Until 2010, Grande was a soldier in the U.S. Army fighting in Iraq. Five soldiers in his unit died in the conflict. Uniform. Call your dress loose with this hat. I got the pick. Shock. My first thought was shock. And then you have a little bit of hope. Not that uh, he's alive. And, and he, you know, and he's dead. While devastated by the loss, he came across Barefoot Ken. This encounter changed his mindset. Grande says the most shocking part was children confronting their parents' death. This reminded him of the many war orphans he'd met in Iraq. After reading about the sorrow and difficulties of Gen and other orphans in Japan, he came to understand the Iraqi orphans' psychological suffering. You have it in your hands. You, you can actually read his feelings, you know. You can actually see it, you, can, you know. I think it's more, it's more powerful like that. Grandi began questioning whether the Iraq war was right. But it's also very, you know, people should, should read this stuff. Mm -hmm. People should, you know, it's like I said, right before you, you, you go to war, people should know the consequences of, uh, you know, mm -hmm. everything. With us is stage director Kyo Kijima, who wrote and directed the musical version of Barefoot Gen, staged in Japan and abroad. It was impressive that former U.S. soldier Carlos Grande wished he had read the story before going to war. Barefoot Gen has been translated into 20 languages with more than half published over the last 10 years and it's appreciated worldwide. How do you see this? As you heard from a woman in a different part of the video, the issues of war and nuclear are quite close to us. It's been a long time since the end of World War II, but the passage of time has nothing to do with it. The world is facing war and nuclear problems right now, and this is affecting the story's widespread popularity. You staged the musical in the U.S., Poland, Russia, and other countries. What was the reaction of the audience? 
In the U.S., children learned after the war that the atomic bomb brought peace. I suspect that by intention, they were not taught about the devastation the bomb caused, which is probably why in New York people were shocked at the horrible destruction brought about by the atomic bomb. The musical changed their views on the issue. The Auschwitz concentration camp in Poland testifies to the Nazis' atrocities. It seems that Polish people were more sensitive to the situation that a happy family is suddenly separated following a disaster, suppression, or other incidents to the discrimination Gen faces for being an atomic bomb survivor and to the sadness and other feelings of those whose families fell apart. I hear many views such as these. In Russia, those exposed to radiation in Chernobyl came to watch the musical. They saw again face the same problems they now face, similar discrimination. Although people no longer say that radiation is something contagious, they too cannot go back home, like Gen. Every day they have to measure the amount of radiation in their food as they eat. They didn't see the musical as a story about war and radiation from an atomic bomb, but rather as a story of how you deal with radiation each day. Nagazawa wrote Barefoot Gen out of his strong sense of anger toward the war and the atomic bomb. But his most important message, I believe, is to survive, no matter what. Yes, that's right. The first half of the story covers the terrible damage the war caused, but people still have to carry on. And I think Nagazawa wanted readers to feel Gen's energy, his effort to survive and live on despite various hardships. When I use the word survive, some people take it personally. They may say it's okay to trample on others in order to survive, but that's not what Nakazawa is saying. I think what was most important for him was that people help each other, do what they can and make every effort to survive. Nakazawa survived the atomic bomb, but everyone in Japan back then suffered from and survived the war. Like Nakazawa, many people were orphaned or lost family members. I think that's why he wanted to support others and be supported as one, because they all share a similar experience and feel the same way. Nakazawa's strong feelings apparently got across to people worldwide. It's amazing that most of the translators were volunteers and wanted people in their own countries to read the story. For one thing, I think this is due to the power of manga as a media. Manga consists of frames and readers have to fill the gap between each. It calls for readers to participate. It's like theatrical art, a live performance requiring the audience's participation. Gen was written 40 years ago, but even today readers must participate in the manga. It's not a passive experience, it's a test of your own identity. Readers don't become moved by manga. They take part in the process of feeling moved and want to share it with others. I think that's why they want to put it in their own language and to share it with their fellow country people. You mean the process of filling the gap creates the reader's own experience? It's only a pseudo-experience, but one important factor seems to be that readers feel the manga goes on because they take a positive part in the process. Misayo says her late husband was passionate about conveying his experience to the younger generation until the very end. But having said that, the children to whom we owe the future have no experience of war, at least in this country. Doesn't this mean they won't know if a war is coming their way? Nakazawa apparently wanted children to read his work, so after they've grown up, they can reflect on Gen's story and want to read it again as adults. 
May I continue? Please, go ahead. <laughs> As time passes, the atomic bombing will be forgotten unless we try to learn about it. I hope Barefoot Gen will prompt people to learn more about our past tragedy. As the Iranian woman in the report said, learning about it is the only way to totally eliminate nuclear weapons. As a starter, people should read Barefoot Gen or see the musical. The story is raising many issues that we need to discuss, and I also hope it will provide a forum to trigger such discussions. Yes, indeed. Thank you, Mr. Kijima. My pleasure. That was stage director Kyo Kijima. Thank you for watching.